डेली कनेडियन न्यूज बुलेटिन इन हिंदी एंड उर्दू ओनली एट टैक टीवी Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 24th of November. Indian PM Modi says upcoming election to decide Gujarat's fate for the next 25 years. Pakistan's PM names Asim Munir as new chief of army staff. And Sri Lankan president vows to crush unlawful anti-government protest. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said the upcoming assembly election in Gujarat is all about deciding the state's destiny for the next 25 years as he continued his campaign trail in the state. The vote is likely to offer a clue to prospects of PM Modi's ruling BJP in a general election due by 2024. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said the upcoming assembly election in Gujarat is all about deciding the state's destiny for the next 25 years as he held a series of rallies in the state to woo voters addressing a gathering in Banaskantha Modi said though many developmental works have been carried out so far by the ruling BJP time has come to take a giant leap The PM said the BJP government in Gujarat has focused on tourism, environment, water, cattle rearing and nutrition aspects for the overall development of the region. Sarkar koni bane, koni na bane, kon mantri bane, kon na bane. Ye parojan ni chutni j nahi. Aa chutni to aagami 25 varsh apna Gujarat na keva hase e nakki karva mate ni chutni je. PM Modi's Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party has been in power in Gujarat since 1998 and Modi served as its chief minister for nearly 13 years before becoming prime minister in 2014. Modi remains popular despite criticism of inflation and unemployment. Elections for the 182 member Gujarat Assembly will be held in two phases on December 1 and 5 with results expected on December 8. The vote is likely to offer a clue to BJP's prospects in a general election due by 2024. Apart from main opposition Congress, the other main contender is the Aam Aadmi Party. And news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday appointed Lieutenant General Asim Munir as the successor of outgoing Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. Munir, who headed both the Military Intelligence and Spy Agency (ISI) in the past, will now have the responsibility to honor the pledge by outgoing Chief Bajwa to keep the military out of national politics. After days of speculation over the selection of Pakistan's next chief of army staff, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has picked Lieutenant General Asim Munir to succeed outgoing General Kamal Javed Bajwa. In a tweet, country's information minister Maryam Aurangzeb informed about the appointments of army chief and joint services chief, adding that the summary has been sent to President Arif Alvi for his approval. Addressing the media, Defence Minister Khwaja Asif said he hopes the President endorses the advice sent by PM Shahbaz Sharif. उम्मीद है, उम्मीद है कि सदर साहब जो है इस चीज को मुतनाज़ा नहीं बनाएंगे और Prime Minister की जो advice है कानून और आयन के मुताबिक अल्लाह के फ़ाज़ल से उसको endorse करेंगे ताकि ये हिजानी कैफियत जो है शाम तक Lieutenant General Munir is the senior most officer after the outgoing chief General Kamal Javed Bajwa considered a close aide of Bajwa Munir served under him when the former was heading the 10 corps before assuming his current position of quartermaster general Munir was heading spy agency ISI the inter services intelligence but got sacked after India conducted preemptive strikes in Balakot His appointment for army chief coincides with a dispute between the military and the former prime minister Imran Khan accuses the army of complicity in his ouster earlier this year while the army denies any such role it is believed it plays an extraordinarily influential role in the governance of the nuclear armed nation 
Well, more news from Pakistan. The IMF on Wednesday said timely finalization of a recovery plan is essential to support the discussion and financial support for Pakistan. The statement comes after Pakistan's finance ministry earlier said they will expeditiously finish the technical engagement with IMF to complete the ninth review of the bailout program. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, on Wednesday said timely finalization of a recovery plan from flood is essential to support the discussion and financial support for Pakistan. This comes after the disagreement between the global lender and the South Asian nation over the flood damage, where the latter estimates damage varies from 10 billion to 40 billion US dollars. To add to the wars, Pakistan's credit default crossed 80% mark last week. The global lender's representative in Islamabad, Esther Perez Ruiz, said the timely finalization of the recovery plan is essential. The IMF staff is continuing discussions with Pakistani authorities over policies to reprioritize and better target support toward humanitarian needs, while accelerating reform efforts to preserve economic and fiscal sustainability. Earlier, Pakistan's finance ministry in a statement had said they will expeditiously finish technical engagement with the IMF as part of the ninth review of the bailout program, but a date for completion is yet to be announced. As Pakistan approaches the December 5 deadline to pay $1 billion international bond repayment, the fund from IMF can act as a lifeline for the South Asian nation. Its total foreign reserves with the central bank stood at $7.9 billion as of last week. And a news from Afghanistan signaling a possible return to practices common in its hardline rule in the 1990s. The Taliban has confirmed that 14 people were lashed for different crimes in Afghanistan's Logar province after 19 others were punished similarly elsewhere earlier this month. 14 people were lashed in a football stadium in Afghanistan's eastern Logar province, the Taliban-led Supreme Court said in a statement on Twitter on Wednesday. In the latest sign of the ruling group applying its strict interpretation of Sharia or Islamic law to criminal justice, it was the second confirmation of lashings by the Taliban this month signaling a possible return to practices common in its hardline rule in the 1990s. Fourteen people, including three women, were lashed in the presence of scholars, authorities and people for different sins, including adultery, robbery and other forms of corruption, the Supreme Court said, adding two other people had also been lashed in Lagman province. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid recently said the Islamic Emirates Supreme Spiritual Leader Habitullah Akhunzada met judges this month and said they should carry out punishments consistent with Sharia law. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban's administration over its track record on human rights since it took power in August 2021. It has been heavily criticized for a nationwide ban on secondary school for girls and restrictions on movement of women. Public lashings and executions by stoning took place under the previous 1996-2001 to rule of the Taliban. Such punishments later became rare and were condemned by the foreign-backed Afghan governments that followed, though the death penalty remained legal in Afghanistan. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday rejected the opposition's demand for early parliamentary elections and vowed to use the military to crush any future anti-government protest aimed at regime change. He lamented that he will not dissolve the parliament until the ongoing economic crisis is resolved. Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikrame Singhe on Wednesday rejected the opposition's demand for early parliamentary elections and vowed to use the military to crush any future anti-government protests aimed at regime change. 73-year-old Vikrame Singhe took over as the president in July this year after the then-president Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled Colombo, following massive anti-government protests over the country's worst economic crisis since 1948. Vikrame Singhe told lawmakers on Wednesday that he will not dissolve the parliament until the economic crisis is resolved. Vikrame Singhe has the mandate to serve out the rest of the Rajpaksa's term, which ends in November 2024. 
However, the opposition parties are demanding early elections, claiming that his government lacks electoral credibility. Smaller protests to demand the solution to the economic crisis have continued since Rajpaksa's ouster, and Vikramasinghe has also faced criticism for ordering a crackdown on demonstrators and detaining protest leaders under the draconian Prevention of Terrorism Act. Sri Lanka's worst financial crisis has been triggered by record low foreign exchange reserves that have left the island of 22 million people struggling to pay for essential imports, including fuel, food, cooking gas and medicine. And people in India's northeastern Assam state celebrated the birth anniversary of legendary Ahom warrior Lachit Borpukan, popularly known as Lachit Divas, this week. On the sideline of the several events, district administration recreated the Battle of Sarai Ghat in which Ahoms, led by the military leader, thwarted an attempt by Mughal forces to capture Assam. People in India's northeastern Assam state are celebrating the 400th birth anniversary of legendary Ahom warrior Lachit Borfukan this week. Spearheaded by Government of Assam, events commemorating the Ahom commander began on Wednesday evening. As part of a series of events, Kamrup witnessed the recreation of the Battle of Sarai Ghat, in which Borfukan, leading the Ahom forces, defeated the Mughal forces in a naval battle on Brahmaputra River. As you're all aware, Lasit has become Beer Lasit Borfukan in the district of Kamrup because of the Sarai Ghat battle that had happened in our very own district to celebrate which in a symbolic way we are having a dance drama on boards of the famous Sarai Ghat battle in the river Brahmaputra. As you can see the blue flags are represented by Mughals, the red flags are the Assam Sena and the celebratory music you are hearing is of Lasit's victory over Mughal Empire. A three-day long celebration of Lachit Divas as it is known was also kicked off on Wednesday in national capital New Delhi which was flagged off by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswas Sarma. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is expected to attend the celebrations on Friday, also shared greetings on Lachit Divas. Lachit Borfukan, who was commander of the Ahom Kingdom, has always been revered as a legendary warrior in military history and he is a crucial part of the Assamese identity. The National Defence Academy, in his honour, awards gold medal to its best cadet every year. And a residential colony in its southern India is filled with graffiti and wall art of famous current and former soccer players as football fervor has taken over India amid the ongoing FIFA World Cup. India remains a country with ardent football fans who not only follow the matches but also have a huge fandom for famous soccer players. A residential colony in India's southern Tiruvananthapuram city is filled with graffiti and wall art of famous current and former soccer players as football fervour has taken over the city amid the ongoing FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Almost all the walls of the colony where mostly daily wage labourers reside have been painted with graffiti of Argentine soccer player Lionel Messi, Portuguese forward Cristiano Ronaldo and a number of Brazilian players. Brazilian <laughs> To give competition to Argentine fans, supporters of Brazil put up paintings, cutouts and posters of soccer players including Neymar Jr. and Ellison Becker as well as former players Kaka, Ronaldinho and Ronaldo. India remains a country with ardent football fans who not only follow the matches but also have a huge fandom for famous soccer players. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.